What is up guys, Hassan Malik back here again after a very long time. I know I haven't made a video in over a year and I'll get around explaining why at some point in the future, but for now, I wanna get back to what we do on this channel and talk some Lego Star Wars. So today, we're gonna to be taking a look at every single Lego Star Wars set ever made and some sets we're expecting to get later this year. And this video will be following a little bit of a different format from the regular videos. I'll actually be talking through the entire thing. So if you're already feeling a little bit sick of my voice, feel free to mute me and play some music in the background. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start things off with 1999. By the way, this video is not scripted. I'm kind of just watching along with you guys, reacting to some of the sets. Some pretty decent stuff here. All the sets obviously look very old. They are about 24 years old at this point. Uh, that's a pretty cool looking vulture droid. Looks a little odd in the brown, but I guess they didn't really have anything better at the time. A lot of pretty decent sets here. It's still kind of odd they're using that yellow skin tone, but for the time, it was fairly iconic. Classic Anakin's pod racer. That pit droid build was pretty decent for the time. It honestly kind of holds up to today. Uh, one thing I kind of find a little odd is to this day, till 2023, we haven't found a better mold for battle droids. We're still doing the exact same thing we did in 1999, which is pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, overall, it's not a bad year. Uh, my favorite set probably got to be this one right here, the most Espa pod race. Pretty iconic scene from the movie. But uh, yeah, it's going to do from 1999. All right, so we've already entered the 2000s. We got some pretty cool sets here. These are those mini figure packs. I really wish LEGO would do something like this today. Uh, just sets with just a bunch of mini figures, nothing else. But I think that'd be an impossible ask at this point. I mean, a lot of the reasons people buy sets are for the mini figures. So LEGO would never hurt their own bottom line like that. Desert Skiff, super iconic set. Got that, seen that remade a bunch of times. Gun Control, nice one. Flash Beater. Not as iconic anymore, but still a pretty decent set. Very blocky looking A-Wing, but you know what? Gets the job done. And oh, this is my favorite vehicle right here. The Slave 1 in its first rendition. Looking pretty good. Uh, got the AAT here. This is a uh, junior set, or was a junior set at the time. Pretty awesome that they tried to do a B-Wing at this time period. I mean, it's a pretty difficult looking vehicle. So there was our first UCS set, the TIE Interceptor. But yeah, oh, and there we go. The classic first variation of the Millennium Falcon looking pretty good as well. And also the UCS X-Wing, which we got again uh, recently as well. But some of these Technic sets, some of these work, like the Pit Droid honestly doesn't look that bad. Bow Droid, Droidica don't look too bad at all. They look pretty decent, but we do get some weird ones later on in 2001 that we're about to look at like the Stormtrooper and whatnot. Continue on here with 2001. The Droid Escape, we've seen this set remade so many times. Very iconic one. Honestly, I wish they'd give us a set like this again. That Droid Carrier, just a set with a whole bunch of battle droids. That'd be awesome. The TIE Fighter here in that original blue color, which honestly looks weird, but for Leo sets, it does work a lot. They do have that blue tint in the movies, or a slight blue tint, uh, but now they're always done in that light gray. This is where we start to see a little bit of that Uncanny Valley looking Technic sets. Very weird looking Stormtrooper. Uh, honestly, this is really cool. I want them to remake this set. That Darth Maul looks super creepy, like you should. Yep. And moving on here to 2002. Still, all these uh, years are pretty small. We only have like eight or nine sets throughout these years. Uh, I think 1999 might have been the largest one. Finally, moving on to episode two here. So we got some new movie sets. I actually own this one, the Tusken Raider Encounter. One of my first Lego sets I ever got. Still rocking that yellow skin tone at this point as well. This is one that we need remade right here. The Bounty Hunter, the Bounty Hunter Pursuit. It's a very good set. Some more original trilogy stuff. Dude, the Jedi Starfighter. This one looks a little odd because it doesn't have like the tilted wings. Um, yeah, it's a little bit odd. These sets were, I guess, re-released in 2002. I think those are the same ones from 1999. Django Fett Slave 1. That's what we need again, for sure. That Republic gunship, even though it's very old, kind of holds up to this day. I know a lot of people still own that one. It's a very nice one. This is kind of interesting. They did these like part one, part two sets. They did the Final Duel part one, Final Duel part two. I also own this one, the Jedi Defense part one. This is a cool one. And they got the part two set here. Kind of wish they brought something back like that for some iconic moments, you know, bring back that dual set thing they had going. These Technic figures aren't as bad as the other ones, I'd say. Django could use some work, but he looks pretty decent. Super Battle Droid looks cool. 
but I guess we have mechs now, so we don't need Technic figures. That set looks really awesome for like the, the MIDI build with like the chrome pieces. Really hard to get those chrome pieces nowadays, so a pretty decent looking Naboo fighter. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move on to 2003 here. Uh, this is actually where I got my first ever LEGO Star Wars set and LEGO set to begin with. It was right here, the Jabba's Prize. That was kind of weird since so I owned a bunch of sets from the previous years. Nothing from 1999, but I think I own some stuff from 2000, 2001. But uh, yeah, that was my first ever LEGO set right there. I think it was like five or six bucks. Super cheap set, but uh, it's the reason I love Boba Fett, because I got that set right there. Pretty decent looking Jabba's Palace. The Hailfire droid here looks really good in that Technic form. First ATTE with some really derpy looking clone troopers with the open slit faces. Thank God we moved away from that design. And then a whole bunch of uh, micro builds here. They all look pretty decent. But uh, yeah, overall this is kind of like a weird year in between movies. I mean, at the time Star Wars didn't have that much to go off of, but uh, at least at this time they hadn't completely milked the original trilogy yet. So we were still getting a whole bunch of sets from that era and uh yeah a whole bunch of other episode two sets here and some episode one stuff that's nice they're still going back this right here super iconic set i'm sure you guys all know it the cloud city it's one of the most expensive lego sets to date and a ucs snow spear as well all right moving on here to 2004 this is right before what i think is one of the best years of lego star wars so this might be a little bit of a down year i don't think they made that many sets in this one Starting off here with some micro builds, the Sith Infiltrator, Imperial, Sh Imperial Shuttle, looking pretty good. Uh, moving on. Oh, I own this one as well. I think this might have been my second LEGO Star Wars set. Uh, own this most Isley Cantina. This one was super cool to get back in the day. Uh, having a Greedo, which is a very expensive figure at that time, or, or now is a very expensive figure. Our second Millennium Falcon. That's where it kind of introduced that pie shape that we still kind of use to this day a little bit. They didn't really expand on that formula for quite a while. And a whole bunch of other micro builds. So this year was pretty much a bunch of micro builds, not many actual sets. I think this is just a rehash of another set we got uh, from, was it 1999? I think we looked at. TIE Fighter Collection looks sick. And a UCS Y-Wing, which looks pretty good as well. All right, here, this 2005. This has got to be one of my favorite LEGO Star Wars years ever, and that's because it's all pretty much based on Revenge of the Sith, which is probably my favorite uh, Star Wars movie overall. I own this one right here. Got that classic scout trooper. I used to pretend he was Commander Neo because Commander Neo doesn't look much different than the regular scout troopers. Oh, this set right here, the Grievous Chase. I wish they would remake that set completely. That'd be that'd be really great. Uh, Anakin Jedi Starfighter, man, I didn't get that one, which I did. Um, Mustafar Duelier had that one. It had a really cool play feature with the spinning um, uh, turntables that you could put Anakin and Obi-Wan on. I wish I kind of brought that back. It was pretty unique, especially for the time. Uh, it's nice to see Leo trying to innovate like that. Awesome set here. The Turbo Tank, the classic. And he has a whole bunch of clone troopers. All these figures, by the way, had that light up uh, Jedi's so, and Sith, I guess. Uh, with Mace Windu, Darth Vader, Luminar, and Dooley. This set right here, Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter, super, super rare for the time, but worth a whole bunch of money. And we got our Death Star 2 and Sandcrawler as well, two really cool UCS sets. So yeah, that was definitely, I'd say maybe my second favorite year of LEGO Star Wars. We'll get to my favorite at some point here, I'll tell you what that is. But moving on here to 2006, we got a few extra uh, Revenge of the Sith sets with the V-Wing. And then I think they focused more on the original trilogy at this point, which makes sense. We got a whole bunch of prequel stuff right before this. This is where we got that first like real slave one, I'd say, which is pretty nice. Oh man, I wanted that Jubba's uh, barge for quite a while. Nice look. This X-Wing to me always looked a little bit odd. Never really liked the design of that one, but uh, still looks pretty decent. And we got a repackage without the, Mace, the light up Mace Windu figure uh, for the turbo tank. And a really good looking UCS advanced TIE fighter there. All right, 2007 flying by here. And this is where we got the introduction of battle packs. Oh man, what a classic. Got our first clone trooper battle pack here. I think this is a set that 90% of you guys probably own. The super classic old clone troopers with the open slit faces. I know they look very goofy uh, to some of you younger guys, but at the time, 
Man, those are top tier, especially that Shock Trooper. Looked very good. Man, that Imperial Dropship, that looks pretty good as well. This Naboo Fighter, honestly, looks very nice. This one right here, the, uh, the, the Booster Ring, super valuable set to this day. And honestly, I think that might be the best droid carrier that we've seen. That one that we just saw, or maybe not. Super weird set right here. This is straight out of Legends. It's the Tide Crawler. Super weird set, but I like it when Lego kind of steps out of bounds there, out of the cannon, gives us some weird stuff. Uh, another AT-AT -AT here. That looks pretty good. And our first uh, UCS Millennium Falcon, probably, arguably the second best Lego Star Wars set ever. On to 2008 here, and this is a very big year because this is the year that we got the Clone Wars. So very big for Lego Star Wars, very controversial with the type of minifigures they introduced at this point with the weird looking animated eyes. I know some people actually kind of love it. I honestly never did, never really grew on me. Obviously love the show, but just thought it looked very weird in Lego form. They're still using those old style clone troopers at this point, as you can see with the Shock Trooper. We had our first Force Unleashed set, our first and only Force Unleashed set. Um, a lot of cool looking Clone Wars sets from back in the day. Man, this ATTE right here, super cool set. We got Captain Rex in it. This gunship, man. Plo Koon, Asajj Ventress. Yeah, that's a great set. The gunship looking nice as well. This right here is my favorite Republic fighter tank I think we've ever gotten to this day. Uh, even the Twilight, man, that, that vehicle has been kind of forgotten, <laughs> I'd say, by the Star Wars uh, canon overall. Honestly, it hasn't showed up much outside of the Clone Wars movie. Uh, I think we've only got some micro builds here. V19 Torrent in its smaller form. This is pretty cool. Bring this set back right here. That's a great display piece, especially for like the 18 plus sets. Arguably the best Lego Star Wars play set of all time, the Death Star. Super iconic, I'm sure you guys all know that. All right, we're moving on here to 2009. Gonna get some more Clone Wars sets, obviously. The new jetpack piece, super great. Still used to this day with the Mandalorians. Great piece right there. Some more Battle of Hot stuff. Ahsoka is TIE, or not TIE Fighter, Jedi Starfighter. I always wish Count Dooku's Solar Sailor actually had the sails. Um, obviously, it's very hard to do in Lego, but um, I hope they at some point remake that set and give us that midi scale Millennium Falcon looking pretty decent. This, honestly, one of the best battle packs they've ever made. Love the accessories in that one. Uh, the comma, the pauldron. I always liked the pauldron for that. I always preferred the brick built pauldron to the cloth ones. I know the cloth ones have more detail, but uh, maybe it's just, just the nostalgia, but that one always stuck with me. Some super iconic, the Jedi shuttle. This is a great one right here because we see it used so much in the TV series and whatnot. Some micro builds. By the way, you guys, if you guys aren't counting how many sets you guys own, I hope you guys have been keeping track throughout the video. I'd love to know at the end how large some of your collections are. It'd be pretty interesting to see and compare or where you guys end up getting into Lego Star Wars, where your first sets, uh, what years your first sets were bought in. This is a super expensive set. I know all of us uh, want that right there. The ATOT with the, the drop ship. Some super cool stuff from back in the day. Honestly, it's a little sad to see how good we had it back then, uh, especially when it comes to prequel stuff. Being a prequel fan myself, just with the cloners being so large at the time, that's pretty much all we got. Have heavy, heavy focus on the clone troopers and all their vehicles and stuff. So, super cool to see. Chrome Darth Vader looking good. This was kind of interesting. I'm not sure where these sets showed up. I think they might have, they were, oh, I guess it's in Comic Con. It says right there on the top of the box. But uh, yeah, I guess at conventions, you could just straight up snag these minifigures for, um, which I'm assuming ended up being a pretty expensive price, hefty price in the aftermarket Comic Con figures, as you guys know, sell really well. But these are not exclusive, it doesn't look like. So I wonder how these actually do if they're still uh, in box. Let me know if any of you guys actually ended up getting some of those. That'd be pretty cool to hear about. 2010. Some other cool battle packs. Always thought that was weird. They included a pilot in the battle pack. Seems odd. Makes more sense to have an officer, but pilot kind of out of place. Anakin and his snow gear there. Nice. We got some different. Uh, oh, the Tide Defender. This is it. This is a cool one. Kind of getting more of the odd vehicles. The Arc 170, man. They need to remake that vehicle. I had the original one from 2005. Didn't get that one with Kit Fisto, but 
Always wanted a new one. Swamp Speeder here. Nice land speeder as well. I kind of liked how they were doing this at the time, especially with the Clone Wars being like the main uh, point of focus for Star Wars. So they kind of just gave us as many Jedi Starfighters as they could for various random Jedis like Ceci Tin, Plo Koon, more odd ones that you wouldn't see as often. The Slave one looking good. This turbo tank didn't like as much as the one from 2005. It looked a little bit uh, kind of skeleton-like, especially at the axles uh, where the wheels are. This episode with Cad Bane, super cool. If you guys haven't seen it, highly recommend, but I'm sure most of you guys have. Won't spoil it. Really good looking Imperial shuttle and a UCS Obi-Wan Starfighter looking really nice. And we got some micro builds again here. Looking pretty good. Man, that classic Captain Rex box art. Clone Wars box art was top tier. Some of, some of the best that we've seen, I think, from Star Wars. The Chrome, the Chrome Stormtrooper, classic figure. And the prototype Boba Fett. I know a lot of you guys own that one. All right, 2011, the new decade. So pretty, yeah, like I said, I was talking about earlier, we got those uh, kind of random Jedi Starfighters. We got Mace Windows there, which I like. I, I like that Lego was doing that, kind of expanding. Uh, on the different sets we get instead of just getting Anakin's and Obi-Wan's over and over. The hot base looking good. This right here, super cool clone battle pack. This was probably one of the best battle packs ever. The Mandalorian one. Love me some Mandalorians. I know a lot of you guys definitely own that one. Imperial V-Wing. This set was super cool. I wish it had a little bit, a few more battle droids, uh, but still a nice set overall. Hey, the Jedi shuttle will be getting again this year. With the upcoming Ahsoka sets, I'll talk about that at the end of the video. But a very good looking set as well. I own this one right here uh, with Saj Ventress. And I, I guess that was our first holiday set. I guess this is where we started getting the uh, the advent calendars for those Star Wars in 2011. So the most Espa pod race. I like this set. I like the builds. It would have been cool if we got a third uh, pod racer as well. Oh man, the Republic Frigate there with Commander Wolf. Another Millennium Falcon still using that pie design. Ooh, one of the largest UCS sets ever made. Uh, the more micro builds, tons of micro builds every year. Honestly, it's gonna keep going up with the years going on. 2011 is, the years honestly keep going larger and larger with sets. I think they peak around like 2015 or 2016, around Force Awakens. Kind of felt like when Star Wars at an all-time high at that point. And I think that's when Lego was really pumping out the sets for the new movies and whatnot. And then it kind of slows down a little bit, but we still get a decent amount of sets, even in recent years. Nice looking Shadow ARF Trooper, 2012. Another decent year for Lego Star Wars. This right here, I think includes arguably the best Lego Clone Trooper ever. Uh, the Arc Trooper right there, I had that one. It's a great battle pack. This is when we were, they were doing that thing with battle packs where they included like two figures from each faction. Honestly, didn't like that. Preferred having four of one, so having like four clone troopers and whatnot. But they, I guess they stepped up the quality of each figure, so it wasn't all too bad. That X-Wing, I like that much better. Oh, this is a great set right here. I know it's a, a Jedi Starfighter, but it's pretty much a small Musfar Duel set, which is cool to see. I love it when you get that Musfar Duel. Probably the coolest scene from Revenge of the Sith. Old Republic, man. Those trailers are super good. Never really got into the game, but I'm glad Lego was making a few sets here and there for it. You can see Ceci Tin's uh, Jedi Starfighter, Gung and Sub, more Old Republic sets. Man, that Darth Malgus, that looks great. What a great figure. Lego really went off on his armor there. The Malevolence. Oh man, it's the closest thing we got to a Separatist gunship or com command ship. It'd be nice to get one of those at some point, Lego, so if you're listening. Ooh, Palpatine's Arrest. One of the best sets ever. Uh, doubt Lego will remake that, or maybe they will due to fan demand, but I always thought it was odd they even remade that one to begin with, considering how violent uh, that scene is in nature. Uh, but hey, you know what? Super cool set. Glad that we got it. I don't own that one, but for all of you guys that do, you are quite lucky. It's a great one to have. This was super unique, I think, at the time. It kind of sucks they didn't I guess, sell too well and Lego stopped doing that with the Planet series. Um, UCS R2-D2, got a new one as well. UCS B-Wing, man, this one looks good. Really wish I grabbed that one at the time. And we got some more micro builds here. I wonder how many uh, micro pod racers we've seen to this point. 
uh, some decent ones here. The Stap, the STAP, the MTT. Darth Maul, shirtless Darth Maul, looking good. In this Clone Wars stuff. And TC14 looking good as well. Uh, this set right here is a Comic Con or Star, oh, sorry, Star Wars Celebration exclusive. And I guess, yeah, this is the Comic Con exclusive. And I guess included that similar uh, Darth Maul minifigure. It's just some cool, like, chibi builds, almost like early versions of micro fighters in a way, but not really. Uh, 2013, wow, starting off big here. One of the best sets ever, the Ewok Village. I think arguably one of the best Lego Star Wars play sets ever made. The Headhunter looking good, and Mandalorian Starfighter looking pretty decent in mini micro build form as well. Loving that Yoda, Yoda box art, by the way. This is a, another great year for LEGO Star Wars. Another battle pack, still doing that similar thing. Two figures each, which I don't really like, but you know what, the quality of the figures were going out there. Those, man, those old Republic Troopers, those Republic Troopers, they look really good. This A-Wing, I own this one. I honestly got it just for Admiral Akbar. The build was good too, but man, it was nice to get Admiral Akbar so cheap. Pong Krell and the Hide Hunter. Ooh, we need this again. Rank War Pit, wish I had that. Super iconic set. So more Planet Series sets. These are pretty decent looking. For any of you guys that actually owned any of these, I never bought any of them. Did you actually end up hanging up those planets or use them for display purposes at all? Or they kind of just sit in a drawer? Because I know a lot of people bought these sets kind of for the minifigures or cheap way to get some decent figs. But uh, the builds are honestly pretty decent, like the planets. All right, if you guys got this set back in the day, you were extremely lucky. I actually didn't pick it up. Man, I always thought they'd make Captain Rex again in his phase two form, but Lego hasn't made him since 2013. That's pretty crazy, right? Hopefully that's gonna change this year. But another great set here, some episode two base sets based on the movie, Django Fett. Yoda vs. Dooku, man, we need more of this. We need that set remade for sure. And some Lego original stuff, Check 14, really good looking minifigure. A great looking ATTE as well, Coleman Trevor, the iconic Coleman Trevor. And the classic 2013 Republic gunship, which we should be getting an updated version of soon, like a play version, not a UCS one. UCS one was great, but I think a lot of us wanted a regular uh, minifig scale version. And that headhunter right there, that was a really cool one. Another old Republic set, the figs in that look super awesome, especially that Sith uh, Acolyte, I guess. I wouldn't, I don't know what his name was. If you guys do know, let me know down in the comments, but great looking figure. Some more Comic-Con exclusives. They've really slowed things down with the Comic-Con exclusives, I guess, at this point. But at the time, they were super cool. Some other niche uh, convention sets, like the Stealth Fighter, you can just make this yourself. Not sure how much that's gonna be worth. Honestly, this Yoda figure, I guess, shouldn't be too hard to make. And a little Jedi Holocron room here. All right, 2014. This, I think, is probably my favorite year of LEGO Star Wars ever. And again, I think you guys can see why. It's pretty much based on Revenge of the Sith again. I think a lot of people would agree this is one of the best years of LEGO Star Wars. Even these micro uh, builds look pretty good. From the micro fighters, a lot of people bought that set just for the, the standard white phase two clone trooper. Great micro fighter to have. Han Solo, Million Falcon. See, even the micro fighters, which people tend not to care too much about, were pretty decent this year. My favorite year for, for LEGO Star Wars overall. I think this might have been the first year of micro fighters, by the way. I could be wrong. I'm forgetting if we looked at them in the previous years. Some more battle packs here. They look pretty good. Oh, come on now. She Troopers looking great. My favorite battle pack. Whew. Utapau Troopers with the Airborne. Commander Neo, the Scout Trooper. And the Bark Speeder looking good. Remake of Anakin's Jedi Starfighter. Or Interceptor, sorry. Looking really nice. The V Wing. We're kind of just getting remakes. I, I, I love this set. Always included, oh, I forget the name, the animal that Obi-Wan rides on. I always wish included that. If you guys remember, I'm completely blanking. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, Troid Gunship looking good as well. ATAP. Honestly, kind of wish it included some shock troopers, although it makes no sense. Just to kind of show back to the old ATAP that we got from Lego. These clone troopers are actually the clone troop, or the clone war style. So they have that little bit of a more animated look to them. Same with these shock troopers. But still, very good looking figs. And the sets themselves are really cool. That Coruscant gunship, really awesome. Glad to see those return in Jedi Survivor this year. That was really fun to see. That game, by the way, pretty decent. Or, I mean, one of the better things we get from Star Wars in recent years. 
I think I like the first a little bit better though. Make sure to let me know down in the comments what you guys thought, if you guys played them both. The Ghost, man, I never got that one. I honestly regretted it so much after because it became such an iconic vehicle and Rebels really grew on me toward the later half. So really glad that we're getting it again this year, hopefully. Okay, I'll have another chance to pick it back up. This one was a little bit disappointing. I wish it included more droids. A really nice sand crawler here as well. I think this was a very good sand crawler, especially for the time. And then some more, oh, Darth Revan. Great polybag fig to have. Oh man, I wish I, I wish I went out and grabbed that one. Never did. And a decent little micro build for Kanan and the Ghost. And now 2015, this is like the big year. We have probably the most sets in this year. I think there's 51 total. And that's because this is when Star Wars had an all time high in terms of hype. We had Rebels going and all the hype for the new movie. I know it didn't pan out the way we thought it would with the sequel trilogy, but at the time, for those of you guys that remember, uh, it was a pretty good time to be a Star Wars fan. A lot of people fear so much exciting stuff going on with Force Awakens and whatnot. And, and honestly, with the way Force Awakens uh, released, I think most people were pretty happy with it. Very, uh, a lot of potential for the future uh, at the time. Ultimately didn't pan out, but I guess none of us could see that at the time. But it's nice to kind of go back, take a look at how things were. Some pretty decent micro fighters there. The clone pilot, always thought it was, I, mean, I guess they can't do it, but they need to shave down the little spike on the back of the clone pilot's head. Ooh, Rebels Stormtroopers. Always look super odd. Don't know why they changed it. Always thought they should have stuck with the regular ones. Those uh, gunmetal gray Stormtroopers looking really good. Always like that set. The Skyhopper, really odd set to get, but I, I think it's a really cool one. Super awesome to get the Inquisitor here. That was, that was really that was really cool especially because he returned kenobi although i was a little bit disappointed with kenobi as a series but still that set was pretty decent this is what i meant the hailfire droids looked better back in the day like that looks very disappointing this was a pretty decent set a lot of clone troopers this right here i loved i grew up on that original animated version of clone Wars, so i actually went and bought that anakin's custom jedi starfighter glad they were kind of stepping out of the cannon there uh, this battle pack also super cool geonosis troopers Got Ezra and Sabine and their speeders here. That flash speeder making a comeback. <laughs> Not the most iconic thing in the world, but it's, it's nice getting some Phantom Menace sets here, right? Kind of the forgotten Star Wars movie. Uh, oh man, that final dual set. That was a great set to have, man. 2015, what a year. The UCS TIE Fighter looking good as well. Some more Phantom Menace sets here. Watto, getting Watto in minifigure form. That was great. Some holiday sets, and here we go. Moving on to the Force Awakens stuff. It takes me back, man. Seeing these sets before the movie came out, we were all so excited at the time. And a lot of these sets were just really good Lego Star Wars sets, although heavily overpriced. Oh man, I have this uh, Pose uh, X-Wing here. Love the black and orange. Didn't really like the redesigned color. I think they should, probably should have brought that back you know, in episode nine. Man, one of the most botched Lego Star Wars sets of all time, Kylo Ren's uh, fighter there, episode nine. Millennium Falcon, some more Rebel sets. And uh, this is, I guess, where we make up for the uh, Technic Troopers, the Bionicle style uh, figures instead. I always thought these were decent, never picked them up. And I always saw these like completely loaded up uh, in stock at store shelves. So I'm not sure how many people are buying these. I just, I never saw these selling out. They're always completely in stock, always on sale. The only one I really liked was Grievous, but I think that's because of the fact that he was like one of the non-human uh, characters to get recreated in that form. Admiral Yularen, what a cool poly bag. Never got that one, which I did. The C-3PO right here, I have this one, great printing. Side leg printing, arm printing, very good C-3PO. And some more Comic-Con convention exclusive stuff, stuff you can make. 2016, so I think we got the Lego Star Wars Force Awakens video game. Always found it odd they made a game just on that one movie. It's hard to really milk that entire movie out for an entire game. We got the whole trilogy in the Skywalker saga years later, but still at the time, I always thought it was kind of weird. And with this, you're going to be seeing at, at this point, we're going to be seeing a whole bunch of sequel stuff. We've got Finn in his Stormtrooper outfit. Oh, this uh, Hawk base. I think I'm still very disappointed at the time. I think a lot of people were expecting more of a UCS style set. It was done in that play style. Uh, it kind of felt like a whole bunch of smaller sets kind of hodgepodge together. Uh, I know a lot of people are disappointed with that one. Some more of these Bionicle style figs here. Kylo Ren actually looks pretty decent. I can't lie. 
but the rest, a little odd. Phasm looks decent. I think it's when they don't have that human face. That's when start, things start to look a little bit odd. Oh, this set right here. Always saw this in Source Shells. I don't think anyone ever bought that. Uh, that set right there. K2SO, Death Trooper looks good. Man, they were really going in on those Bionicle sets. I didn't realize how many of those we actually got. Some more Micro Fighters here. These are pretty decent, you know, get some decent figures for a small price. Hera and the Ghost. It's nice to get Hera in a cheap set. Uh, we're gonna be getting her later this year as well for some of the Ahsoka sets. Some more Micro Fighters. And this is the year, this is when we were releasing, they were releasing Star Wars movies back to back. So we get some Rogue One stuff as well. So that was nice. So this, I wish we saw more of this in the movie, like actual Resistance soldiers going out and fighting. Uh, but then it turned out the Resistance was just the Rebels again. Hey, some Battlefront 2 sets, man. Battlefront, great game. Wish it was still going. I still go back and play it sometimes. Really cool game. Just takes me back. Like, what a good time it was to be a Star Wars fan at this time. Things are really looking up, man. Uh, some other great sets here. Uh, the Carbonic Freezing Chamber. Have that one. It's really cool. I love the play feature. You could bring it down, swap them out real quick, switch them up. This set was really cool. Balance Hakodana owned that one. Really expensive, but everyone at the time just wanted it for the figs. I think that was the first set we get, that we got Kylo Ren with the mask as well. So it was a pretty cool set. Spider Droid looking good. This was a odd one. I don't know too much about this. This is another Lego original Star Wars thing. Another advent calendar. Looking decent. Oh, this right here. This is a cool set. Man, Force Awakens, although sequels didn't end up panning out, just itself as a movie, very good movie. Like, it really had built a solid base for what the sequels could have been. And here we go. We're getting into some Rogue One territory. Man, Rogue One. Got to be one of the best Star Wars, like best made Star Wars movies of all time, especially after seeing Andor. Oh, I wish we'd get more stuff like this. Krennic Shuttle, what a good looking ship. Very intimidating. Some more stuff from Rebels here, the AT AT or ATTE, sorry. Public Fighter, man. Everybody wanted this set for that Ahsoka. We got grown up Ahsoka. We'll be seeing more of her. We've seen a lot more of her figure recently, so that's good. And we're gonna finish off here with some polybag figs and moving on to 2017. This right here was kind of like the turning point for Star Wars. Well, not really the beginning of the year, so not really 2017, but more the end of 2017 when The Last Jedi obviously came out. Very divisive movie, as I'm sure you guys know. Really split the fan base, and this is kind of where I think Disney Star Wars as a whole started to uh, misfire a little bit. As for the Lego sets though, especially with the earlier half of the year, most of them were based on row one. Still got some really decent stuff. UCS Snowspeeder, it's a great set. The Ewing Man, always wanted a a larger version of that set or a more detailed version. Uh, it'd be great to get a UCS one, but I just don't think the vehicle has as much of a presence to, to warrant a UCS set, but it would still be cool to see at some points. Uh, I have some friends in the community who have made some really decent ones. Uh, some more battle packs here. Still doing that two uh, figures. Oh, no, sorry. We're going back to the four figs for faction here. This is what I like to see. Oh, it is. Uh, this Bounty Hunter Battle Pack, always thought it was kind of odd. It was really a battle pack, got named characters in it. Yoda's Starfighter, you got to see that again. It's kind of odd that we get that set that many times. Because uh, we've seen it a few times in Clone Wars here and there, but I think it's weird that we get it that much. Thrawn, man, that's that figure's worth a lot, especially right now. I'm sure we're going to get him again. One of the best Y-Wings I think we've ever seen. Really accurate and really good looking. Land Speeder, this Desert Skiff. I love this uh, Boba Fett right there. Return, boat, Return of the Jedi. Uh, Boba Fett looking good. Lando with that A-Wing. This set kind of sucked, uh, I'll be honest. Or I guess it just reminds me too much of Candle Bite. This set right here, always on source shelves. Never saw that thing uh, bought by anyone. Quadcopter, cool build, just not quad, uh, quad jumper. Weird, weird set to get. This one I never really liked too much. I thought it was, uh, it was cool, I guess, to recreate that scene, but Always found that Republic Fighter tank to be a little bit small. So I said I like the, the one from 2008, I believe, a little bit better. Fader Transformation, decent set. Oh, this, I uh, forget the name. I know this is based on a old Thai uh, uh, fighter from uh, the Legends, but I uh, forget the name of it, so if you guys do know, let me know down in the comments. Ooh, the Resistance Bombers. These, man, that opening was pretty cool, although 
Poe being uh, having a lot of plot armor. He's not, he's not he's taking out entire starships. A little odd, but that that bomber thing was pretty dope. Uh, ooh, got the booster ring there, and the second version of the UCS Millennium Falcon. Probably what most people would consider the best Lego Star Wars set. Got the sand speeder there. That's another Legends thing. It's not actually, uh, or it's not actually a snow speeder. Or I guess it, it is still Legends. I'm not sure if it was brought into the canon. If you guys know, let me know down in the comments. But uh, I was really like that one. Really cool set. More of the Bionicle style buildable figures. Always looks super odd. Man, that Ray looks weird. They don't have a helmet that looks pretty good. That that Praetorian Guard. I, I, I can rock with that. That looks pretty nice. Chewbacca looking a little odd. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they they went into this theme for that many years. I feel like uh, they weren't really selling, uh, especially in the first year they introduced them. But yeah, uh, they really decided to go in on those. Yeah, but that'll pretty much do it for 2017. On to 2018 here, and this is where Star Wars have really got to uh, split apart. I guess the fan base at least it's really divisive. I always thought this was super weird that they released Solo so close uh, to The Last Jedi before they were following that yearly structure. And I think Solo actually came out right before, was it Infinity War and uh, oh, was it Deadpool 2? So I think like that movie was set up to fail. I always loved Solo. One of my favorite Star Wars projects ever. I think it's heavily underrated. Um, and I wish uh, we get to see more Lego sets based on it, but that is very unlikely because I know a lot of people dislike that movie and it didn't, too hot, it didn't do too hot at the box office. So. Probably never get a sequel, or I guess there is kind of a sequel spinoff in the works with um, Donald Glover's Lando. Getting some micro fighter combo sets here, getting two and ones. Decent idea. A okay battle pack, never liked that one, especially with the, those uh, execution stormtroopers, just because uh, how weird that scene was in the movie. Never liked that uh, Grievous the Speeder. The Octo training set. This was a horrible ATST. I, I hate that he even labeled it an ATST because it doesn't include the head. Um, just for the scene for the movie. Just found it super odd. Yeah, this is where things uh, started to go downhill a bit. I guess was this re release in this year, 2018? I guess it's there twice, the sand speeder. Uh, both Isaac Cantina looking good. This Jedi and Clone Trooper battle pack, pretty decent. It's just odd getting named troopers and battle packs. This set I liked a lot. Those the the patrol stormtroopers from uh, Solo and that battle pack, very unique looking, very cool. Love this speeder. I thought it looked very unique. Um, this set not so much, but uh, I guess for a completionist for a solo guy, I'm kind of biased. Uh, this is a great Tie Fighter to have. All right, this right here, this is one of my favorite Millennium Falcons. I love the Kessel Millennium Falcon. It's just. It was a great idea how they expanded on the vehicle without like taking away from it. Um, love that set, own it, it's super cool. Uh, oh man, Infus Nest, Cloud Riders there, they look pretty cool. This set was great, uh, although the movie could have used some work. I think that's one of the better scenes in the movie. Um, although <laughs> killing off Snoke right in the middle of your trilogy seems a little odd. This set was okay, uh, the, the hauler there. Um, the train set was better. Sandcrawler was a little bit smaller than the last one we got, but it's still a decent set. Hero Dropship. Ooh, the big one here, the big play set, Cloud City, a great set, and a lot of people disliked it. I I disliked it a lot at earlier too, but it's definitely grown on me, uh, especially as a play set and a big fan of Empire. Uh, kind of hard to, to dislike it at this point. Never actually ended up picking it up. I know quite a few people that own it, but always wish came around to, to grab that one. Some more really odd looking buildable figures. Man, I'm, I'm kind of shocked they went on this long. I forget, I guess I forgot what year they discontinued this line at. But uh, yeah, I guess Lego was really sticking with that. Another Darth Vader pod. I think the set we actually got, well, we saw the previous year. Um, a little VIP purchase stand there. And this is where we're getting some odd stuff. Uh, these little micro builds and some of these mini figures, they're not actual sets you can buy. They're included uh, with, I think, magazine purchases uh, in certain countries, mainly in Europe. I live in Canada and I don't think you can get them in the States either. So it's a little bit odd to me getting entire mini figures and stuff like that uh, in, a, in a convenience store or something like that for a few bucks. I think that's a great deal. I really wish they would bring that over here because sometimes you see some pretty cool figures in there, like some clone troopers, things like that. So for those army builders out there, that's a great deal. Like this, you get a really great looking Obi-Wan uh, minifigure, although he's got the pilot headset on, still a great fig to get in a magazine. Uh, although they're, not, they're definitely not free, you gotta pay for them, but still 
Super cool. Wish they'd bring that over here. Getting a whole bunch of them. They're kind of taking up most of that year. All right, 2019. Another super divisive year because this is the year that we got the end to the sequel trilogy. We got Rise of Skywalker. That's toward the end of the, the year though. So most of the sets that we're gonna be taking a look at here aren't from there. We got the 20 year anniversary. This was a pretty cool time to be a Lego Star Wars fan. We got a bunch of cool callbacks. The polybag here from Obi-Wan. I have the original version of that Obi-Wan. So it was great to have that polybag as well. Uh, I got an old chewed up version from when I was a kid. And I got the new one as well. So great set to have. Uh, the micro fighters looking good as usual. Darth Maul. Nice getting some more old style stuff here. This battle pack was cool. Praetorian guards, hate them uh, or love them. They, they, they look really cool, right? Like I think objectively they look really, they look really cool. Battlefront 2 set there with Aiden Versio. Looking pretty good. So I guess those Battlefront sets from earlier Battlefront 1, my mistake. This is a great set right here. I actually really like this. Really iconic small set. Another droid gunship. Honestly, can't complain. Uh, like, it's a great set to get. Another ATAP here. Commander Gree looking good as usual. Some junior sets here. Some really cool figs. I love this set. I love the dual series that they do. Like those smaller, like $15 dual sets, whether it be Mustafar or the ending of Force Awakens that we saw there uh, with Kylo Ren and Rey. Great thing to get. Whether you like the sequels or not, I think it's awesome to be able to get those the climaxes of movies, some of the biggest moments in smaller sets with key characters uh, at such a cheap price. I never actually watched uh, that, uh, sorry, blank on the name, uh, but that Star Wars kids show. You guys will let me know down in the comments. Uh, but uh, this, the minifigures look pretty decent. Some more 20th anniversary sets. Nice hint four there. Advent calendar, some more junior sets. Cool looking Obi-Wan. And a junior's really cute looking A-Wing. And a better looking Resistance A-Wing here. Another thing I was thought was super odd. Now we're getting to the episode nine sets here. It's really hard to fully appreciate these sets. I'm not even really hating on the sets themselves because it's hard to look past the movie and the, the feelings you have toward that when, when looking at these sets. Because uh, again, not on the Lego designers at all. Really, they're kind of just going with what they got here. So like pretty much having like Y-Wings, A-Wings, X-Wings, not expanding on Star Wars at all. I always thought that was super weird about the sequel trilogy like as a whole from like episode seven to episode nine. Kylo Ren's shuttle finally did it right. I own this one. This is one of the few episode nine sets they did good. The Millennium Falcon, one of the best Millennium Falcons I think we got. I think the, uh, even though episode nine wasn't great itself, uh, or I mean, if you did like it, not hating on you if you did, but uh, I think most of us can say that it's a little bit of a lackluster ending to the entire Star Wars saga. So, but still some cool Lego sets to come out of it, but it is hard to kind of separate the movie from the sets that we got. Uh, or the feelings that we had towards Star Wars in general at this time uh, with the Lego Star Wars sets that we bought. Um, so like looking back 2019, it was a cool time, but this was kind of like, I think where Star Wars got to its like most toxic levels probably. Uh, I think a lot of, a lot of you guys probably remember that stuff. It wasn't a great time to be a Star Wars fan. Most people were pretty upset uh, with the way things were looking. And we get some more micro builds here in those magazine sets but yeah i mean if you did uh, enjoy the sequels though hey more power to you you know uh i wish i enjoyed them as much as you guys did but you know and i also don't like completely hate them by the way i don't think they're horrible films or anything just uh i think they could have been better in my opinion uh, moving on to 2020 this is where we get i think some of the clone wars season seven sets and we get some more episode nine stuff Man, including uh, making Star Wars sets with the Lego Arts uh, theme, super cool. Uh, that that Darth uh, Maul set there was a really nice choice. Uh, just in general, getting more of those as we go on. It's gonna be super super cool to see with the Lego Star Wars theme. Again, these are like, uh, was it Sorry Bliss? That was her name, the character in episode nine. Cool, like figure, I guess, looking figure. But again, the character's not all that memorable. She's in one movie. I guess they did a decent job what they could in that movie, but it was, everything felt very rushed. Really cool Mandalorian battle pack at this point. Oh, that's a great looking battle pack. But yeah, some of the episode nine sets definitely just fall flat because of the movie, which is unfortunate. Most far duel, great set. I love that one. Uh, still feels a little odd that, you know, we get a set based on such a violent moment in Star Wars history, but uh, still cool to get. This is a very weird one. The Dorito fighter. I never liked that one. It was in the movie was like, 
few frames, man. Kind of odd, but again, can't blame the designers at all. They were they were obviously making these sets long before uh, the, the movie was actually shown. So, and again, the shortcomings of the movie have nothing to do with the designers. Love this one right here, the Boba Head uh, helmet sets. This is the first time you have seen the helmet sets. Great display pieces. Dio, pretty cool droid. I actually, uh, I liked him in the movie as well. Um, unique personality. But again, just another droid friend that we've seen a lot from Star Wars. Another Anakin's Jedi Interceptor looking good. Oh, this set that we all bought because we all wanted the Clone Wars Ahsoka looking good. Oh, that one is horrible right there. The uh, the Knights of Ren shuttle or uh, the, that that was horrible. No interior. Uh, so even from the design point, bad, bad set. Most Eisley, Most Eisley Cantina looking really good. Another final duel with the Emperor there. The Razor Crest on this one. Love it. Super iconic vehicle from Mandalorian. I have my issues with Mandalorian season three, but those first two seasons, loved it. This set right here, really good. Uh, I, I want to see more sets like that. I think we are getting more sets like that pretty much with the 18 plus line, but I'm glad that Lego is doing that with uh, that Bespin duel. Um, more of these display piece sets. Don't have any play features or anything like that, but they just make really good display models and represent iconic moments from the movies that we know and love uh, in a really detailed way. Um, like we see, we're gonna see later uh, uh, in more recent years. See, this is pretty cool. You get a Praetorian Guard in a magazine for a couple of bucks. That's a great deal, man. Totally wish they would bring that over to Canada. I'd love to get my, my hands on stuff like this. But for those of you guys in Europe, you know, that's really awesome you guys have that. Some more micro builds that we're looking at here. Resistance X-Wing, TIE Dagger, AKA the TIE Dorito. Like, look at that. You get to have this pretty, ex not, not that exclusive, but decently exclusive uh, Luke uh, in his best bin outfit there. A really good minifigure uh, in a set like this. So that's pretty cool. And Yoda's lightsaber. I want them to do more sets like that. Like the lightsaber, just give us entire sets that are lightsabers, like the iconic ones, like Anakin's, Obi-Wan's, that type of thing. Just their own builds on these display models. I think like without the laser part builds and stuff, just the hilts, that'd be really cool. Uh, we've got Anakin's, or Luke's, sorry, same thing. Luke Skywalker's lightsaber there. I guess there's slight differences based on uh, the different film props. Another micro fighter is, I think that's our second Millennium Falcon micro fighter. Always like this set. There are fighters uh, transformations as part of that like 18 plus line of sets, but I always thought it was a little overpriced, um, but still a cool display piece. Although it doesn't really end up making that spherical look that it really has to the movie. So that part wasn't great. The Mandalorian sets, Mandalorian season two sets, that was great to see. Uh, getting, I love that they always kind of went all out on the Mando minifigure, considering how popular the character he was uh, or is uh, with the arm printing and all that. They do a pretty good job on him. All I've always complained about his helmet and they finally address that now. But uh, you know, either way, a really good minifigure to get. I always like this probe droid. Thought it was an underrated set. Uh, great build. Another advent calendar, pretty decent. UCS R2D2, this one's pretty cool. Pop out lightsaber, all the works. The UCS Republic gunship, man. Kind of not great minifigures, but what a great build. That was a great set right here. More of those dual sets based on uh, Clone Wars season seven. Love to see that. I love this uh, Slave One right here, super cool. Uh, especially for the cheaper price, get your like, don't give us such an oversized one, even though it's not in minifigure scale, because more people have a chance to get their hands on it. Bad Batch, I always wanted that shuttle, but as I've been watching the show more, the kind of been losing interest. So maybe I'll still pick it up like aftermarket at some point, but I think it's pretty overpriced at this point. More Mando sets, great looking Mandalorians, the armor, Paz Vizsla, looking super cool. And hey, more of those magazine sets. Look at that, you can get Palpatine or Mandalorian, a couple bucks, great deals. Some micro fighters here. There are a lot of these uh, little aluminum packaged uh, sets here. Should have included right with a yellow lightsaber. That would have been even better. Sith Trooper. Some more micro builds. And yeah, and as we're going out throughout the years, we're starting to see the amount of sets uh, decrease a little bit. Like in 2019, it was, uh, I think, or we went from like 60 sets around 2018, then down to like 56 in 2019. And uh, 2020, it was like 50. I think uh, 2021, it goes down to 40 and it keeps going less and less. Uh, I think I think we're gonna be around 40 this year as well. 2022, all right. 
this was last year's stuff. Some pretty overall a decent year. Uh, I was disappointed with some of the Star Wars content, especially uh, the Book of Boba Fett. Really didn't like that. Um, being a big Boba Fett fan, it, that that show kind of fell flat on its face for me. I didn't really like the directing style or the st story choices weren't too bad, I guess. But uh, the look of the show definitely fell flat for me. So battle packs here to look at. Some decent sets. They introduced a new style of shooters here. Uh, new style of stud shooters. I always really like these new ones. They look pretty good. Another ATST. This set, man, it's cool and everything, the Justifier, but who is it overpriced? Uh, you do get Omega in that. That's a great set right there. Luke's uh, uh, stand against the uh, Dark Troopers. Uh, great set, also a little overpriced. More Helmets line sets. Looking good. Mando here. Looking pretty good as well. Yeah, it's a decent display set. Honestly, under, quite underrated. I really like this one right here. Uh, the Dagba training set, pretty cool. The UCS Razor Crest, man. I need. I don't have that one yet. Really want it though. Man, those first two seasons of Mando, always loved them. Obi Wan's Jedi Starfighter, great set. First Kamen Owen in Lego form. This set I didn't. I didn't really like too much. Uh, I didn't like. I think it's because I didn't like the scene in Mando that much. But even the set kind of just feels like a gray slab. Uh, with some minifigures on top. All right, who doesn't love this set, right? ATT, we got Phase Two Commander Cody. I mean, after all the years of begging hard to hit on set, our own, our only Andor set, pretty much. Uh, I love Andor. Definitely one of the best things to come out of Star Wars in a very long time. So, kind of biased toward that set. Uh, although I guess it doesn't really uh, recreate anything too special. The vehicle's fairly iconic, but not really. Uh, Dark Trooper helmet there. Uh, do, do, do. and some more micro builds getting a file for his clone trooper in there but yeah that last year wasn't as great i'd say but definitely wasn't a bad year of lego star wars at all either i think overall i was definitely feeling a star wars fatigue not really for lego but more for star wars as a whole um and especially with uh mando season three this year um definitely wasn't feeling the the love for star wars at the time i think jedi survivor helped me kind of get back into it a little bit but man as a lifelong star wars fan i've never felt as detached from the the franchise as i had uh this year until this year um but things are coming back around a little bit you know it's star wars it'll never it'll never leave me uh some more micro build the micro fighter love this one as much as i don't like the boba i love the fig looks great Another five first troopers battle pack. This set right here, I think, is pretty dumb. I don't know how many people are gonna want to pick that one up. Uh, kind of seems kind of pointless, especially with how irrelevant they were in the show. Some more Mando season two stuff here. Dark new dark blade mold. Finally, we got that. This is just a big tease right here. Phase two Rex helmet. Come on, just give us the figure, right? Uh, just reveal it already. That's what everyone wants. Still wish they included the mini figures in these helmet line sets. I love this set. Uh, I think it's a little overpriced, especially for the 18 plus sets, but that's just how 18 plus sets go. They are always typically overpriced, but I, I always love that that one right there. UCS X-Wing, great. Uh, mini, mini scale executor there. That looks great as well. Yeah, some junior High Republic sets. I'm not too attached to High Republic, but uh, yep. 330 second trooper battle pack there. That looks pretty good. This set, I honestly don't like as much, especially with how it's priced now. Uh, bo Tan figure looks great. Get the dark uh, saber. Um, looking good. Galvin base. The set feels a little bit empty, but you know, like, that wasn't what was I really expecting. I guess uh, I think I was like, my expectations got a little bit blown out of proportion there. I was expecting a little bit too much. Mechs, I, I still find a little funny, but you know what? I think, uh, especially for kids and younger uh, fans of Lego, I think these are great sets. You get decent figs uh, and a pretty decent build with it, too. And some more little aluminum pack sets look at that you get a 212 trooper right there awesome but yeah that's pretty much gonna do it guys look at that we went through the entire history of lego star wars but we're not done yet we still have some more sets to look at here in 2023 uh i don't have images for these sets these sets are actually based on rumors and leaks but most of them uh based on pretty good sources so you can pretty, uh, you can pretty much guarantee they're going to come out at some point uh but there still are rumors so make sure to take all of this you know with a grain of salt uh, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into those right now.
All right, so first up here, we have set number 40658. This is supposed to be the holiday special diorama. This is actually gonna be an 18 plus set. It's not the advent calendar. It's a little bit different, I guess. Uh, and this one's gonna include Ray, Finn, Chewbacca, BB-8, and maybe some other figs uh, we don't know yet. Uh, and it should be releasing in the fall of 2023. Next up here, we are moving on uh, to set number 75354. The Republic Gunship. This set is going to include 1,083 pieces, and it's going to include minifigures of Padme, Chancellor Palpatine, uh, Commander Fox, and two shock troopers. This one should be retailing for 140 US dollars and will be releasing on September 1st. So, as I was mentioning throughout the video, we will be getting a new and updated Republic Gunship in a minifigure scale, like the fans have been asking for for a very long time. So, this set is going to be Pretty cool. I think a lot of us are pretty excited to finally get our hands on a set like this. Um, although the USCS gunship was also pretty cool, definitely not as cool as having one like this. And it seems like it has a really decent lineup of minifigs. I mean, who doesn't want a new Commander Fox? Uh, moving on down here, we have set number 75357. Uh, this set is going to be based on the Ahsoka series and it's the Ghost. It's going to include 1,394 pieces and it's going to include minifigures for Hera. Uh, Jason Sandula, so uh, Hera's and uh, Kanan's kid. Uh, Chopper, Corey, and then one figure, which uh, is gonna be to be announced, so we don't know yet. Uh, and this set will be releasing for 170 US dollars, so quite pricey, but it's based on a new live action Star Wars series, so what'd you expect, I guess? Uh, and this one should be releasing on September 1st as well. Both these sets, these September 1st sets, we should get images of very soon. Uh, and then moving on here, we have our next Ahsoka set, which is set number 75362. This is Ahsoka's T-16 shuttle. It's going to include 599 pieces, and it's going to include figures for Ahsoka, Sabine, uh, Hu Yang, and an Inquisitor. This one's going to retail for 80 bucks, and it will also be releasing on September 1st. Uh, so like we said, look, looked at earlier with the Jedi shuttle, it's probably going to look similar to that in build um, because it's the same thing as a T-16 shuttle. Uh, but uh, yeah, another cool set, so a little bit cheaper, more of a decent price, I guess, in today's world, although it's also uh, based on a live action series, so you're never gonna get that 10 cents per piece uh, threshold that most people used to look for. Uh, but uh, yeah, moving on here, our another Ahsoka, uh, Ahsoka set, uh, which is set number 75364. Uh, this is uh, a vehicle bet base set. We don't know what the vehicle is, um, but it's gonna include 1,056 pieces. Uh, and it's gonna include figures for Morgan Elspeth, Balan, Shin, a New Republic pilot, and also an astromech droid. Uh, so it's gonna retail for $110 US dollars and will be also releasing on September 1st. So a much better price per piece uh, ratio there, but until we really see images of the set and how large it is, uh, we won't really have an uh, idea of how good of a deal it really is. But uh, yeah, moving on here to our next set. Um, this is a very cool one. It's uh, one of the big sets of the year. It's our direct to consumer set for the year, which is set number 75367, the Ultimate Collector Series, Venator Star Destroyer. This is gonna be a whopping 5,374 pieces. And it's gonna include minifigures for Captain Rex and Admiral Ularin. And this is gonna cost a whopping 650 US dollars. So very unfortunate that we're getting a Captain Rex in such a large, large set. Uh, I hope they release another Captain Rex in a much smaller set at some point, but you know what? At least they're kind of listening to fans, but this is kind of what Lego does, right? When there is a figure that the community has been asking for for a very long time, they're never gonna put him in a set that's like under hundred bucks. They did the same thing with uh, Phase 2 Cody, and I guess why wouldn't they do this with uh, Captain Rex as well? Uh, although he's a much, larger character. I always felt odd that we never got Rex uh, more often in Lego form, especially in his phase two armor, uh, especially seeing how often he shows up in the different shows and stuff. But uh, that's just Lego being Lego, right? Trying to capitalize on the fans uh, hype, which is what they do best. Uh, moving on here, we have our last uh, set, uh, which is set number 75371. It's gonna be a buildable Chewbacca. It's gonna be an 18 plus set. It's gonna include 2,320 pieces, so it's gonna be very large. And uh, it's gonna include one minifigure for Chewbacca 
and it's gonna retail for 200 US dollars. So a very large set. And this one should also be coming out on September 1st. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty much gonna do it for all the 2023 sets that are upcoming that we know of so far. These are rumors based on rumors and leaks. So may, again, make sure to take uh, all this with a grain of salt. By the way, I think I forgot to mention for the UCS Vendor Star Destroyer, it's gonna be coming out in either September or October. We don't know yet, so we'll have to wait and see. But uh, either way, I think overall the, the year is getting uh, uh, better um, uh, this year for Star Wars. Uh, and overall, it's still looking pretty good. So yeah, that pretty much is going to wrap it up for every single Leo Star Wars set ever made. Uh, we went all the way from 1999 all the way till 2023, uh, covering 24 years of Lego Star Wars sets. Um, as usual, guys, or I know it's been a while, but make sure to let me know down in the comments how many of these sets you guys own in your own collections. Uh, which ones are your favorites? And also, what was the first LEGO Star Wars set that you bought? What got you into LEGO Star Wars? Make sure to let me know that and anything else you're thinking down in the comments below. But uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed watching, I'd love it if you considered subscribing and also leaving a like on the video. I'm going to be making a ton more videos like this on other LEGO themes like Marvel and DC as well. So make sure to stay tuned for those. But uh, yeah, we're going to be continuing with some more LEGO Star Wars content. I'm definitely back, guys. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for me, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.